Hello and welcome to Advice. My name is Soham and thank you so much for joining in. In this video we are going to talk about Boto Manga chapter 59. But before that if you are new here then please consider subscribing to our channel since I do weekly anime and manga related content along with a bunch of other stuff. With that being said, let's begin the video. Now firstly we shall begin with the cover page which is dedicated to Kawaki. It's kind of a reference to Prince Kawaki in a way because that is what Ada is calling him since the last chapter and it is basically a reference to that as well because this is the knight or rather this is the prince. Moreover the cover here looks really nice both in black and white as well as in the covered version and of course it is of Kawaki and here he's kind of looking like a native tribal person along with this very distinct leather like coat and this overall looks pretty nice for me and it definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Moreover something important to note here is that this chapter does not contain any panel words of the new team 7 it's kind of weird because people were expecting to see more of Saad and Mitsuki they have been not really that relevant in the story since the Buro fight yeah sure they appeared in the last chapter but i still cannot get over how badly Saad was written in the last one i know people will disagree with me on this one but i just did not like her involvement in the last chapter and hence i was looking forward to get more scenes from her but apparently that is not the case anymore i understand why the anime is doing this because a lot of people will say that it's basically a boto and kawaki show now even the boto is not appearing in this chapter i understand all of those things i also acknowledge the problems the series has from the older fans as well as to how the older characters are not given their due respect i understand that as well because this is technically a sequel even though this is supposed to be the story of boruto this is technically a sequel of the naruto series so they should give some proper or due respect to characters even beyond naruto and sasuke just beyond naruto and sasuke for that matter and maybe include some of the other beloved characters as well it's fine i understand both the spectrums one side is saying that this is the sequel of naruto series so the older characters should get more shine and the other spectrum of people are like this is the newer generation so the newer generation should get the respect that's also fine but the major glaring issue is that the manga is not able to do both it's not able to satisfy both the sides because this is solely focusing upon the story of boruto and kawaki and now just introducing one villain after the other in the new chapters it's fine but story wise or world building wise it's not doing anything i mean literally the new generation the new generation is not present here at all and most of the stuff is being done by the anime now obviously many people are going to bring out the point that the anime is actually doing a very good job in this particular regard so why am i even complaining the problem here is that i have had my issues with the anime in the past and i have been very critical about them especially some of the filler arcs or rather the anime canon arcs which are absolutely horrible for example the time slip arc or even the jugo arc so when i am critical of the anime i have to be critical of the manga as well and it just can't be a bare bones show about two characters without any story or world building whatsoever i'm going to talk about all of these things in a separate video i'm not really going to rant about them here so be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date whenever i upload that video moreover i'm not saying that this chapter is inherently bad in a way or form or something like i'm going to drop the series no that is not the case this chapter also has its good takes and bad takes but it's just that these are genuine and legitimate criticisms and if someone says that oh you are just a hater of the boto series if you bring about these points then that's a very bad take there is bound to be criticisms no matter what the series is and you just can't be a blind fan that really doesn't make any sense whatsoever now moving forward this chapter essentially shows us the flashback of kawaki and code when they were young and the time frame here is not exactly clear but it is obviously taking place after both of them have been marked by their karma here we can also get to see code's white karma and he's obviously very jealous of kawaki because he's getting the center of attention because he's the one who is going to inherit the powers of ishiki otsutsuki from jigen and ishiki is the person whom code regards as a god so he's obviously very jealous about kawaki he's literally going to choke him out because he's that mad and the basic motive of this flashback is to establish the rivalry between these two characters even though later on we find out that code promises to ada that he's not going to attack kawaki but it's just a premonition or rather it's just a foreshadow of the events which are about to transpire in the future of the series moreover something very interesting to note here is that number 1 code is not having his roman numeral tattoo and number 2 he is also not wearing his belt over the forehead the belt or rather whatever thing you want to call So for the first one it's fine i guess it happens sometime down the road it's basically like boros religious cult so kara organization members have to engrave these roman numerals upon their chin or any body part so i'm fine with that but the second one i'm more intrigued about it 
what exactly is this collar what exactly is this belt is this the fabled limiter that amado had installed upon code or is this something totally different where he got hurt after manifesting too much power of the white karma because here once again amado tells to us that the white karma is essentially a powerhouse it's not a vessel but it's the raw power of the otsutsuki clan members so yeah it might be possible that code kind of overloaded with this power and he was not able to take it his body was not able to take it and that's why he got kind of injured that is quite a possibility here but moving forward we see that this was a dream this was a nightmare that kawaki was having and it is established here that in the past kawaki used to have nightmares about jigen or rather ishikyo tsutsuki now it's not really the case but rather he's getting these nightmares about code so once again the dynamic between these two characters is kind of setting up but from this point onwards the entire plot about amado being sus is raised in this chapter but before entering that let me just say that credit where credit is due This chapter definitely had better art. The overall art style is definitely improving. It is evident from the character of Sumire. Her character looks much, much, much better here. Uh, I only have one particular gripe with the character designs of one new character, which is introduced in the form of Demon. But I'm going to talk about it later on. So in the meantime, let's talk about Amado. Because here Amado reveals that he has learned about Kawaki's plan, about how he wants to engrave Boruto's karma upon Code. and that way boto will kind of be able to regenerate inside the body of code amado says that this is not inherently impossible but the chances of doing something like this is quite implausible because code is a very huge powerhouse and it's very 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 unlikely that they will be successfully able to do something like this because in the aftermath against the ishikyo tsutsuki battle even naruto hokage naruto is now nerfed because he does not have kurama anymore and amado expresses his concerns over a one versus one matchup between naruto and code so once again this is all setting up different things but in the meantime in the midst of all of these things amado reveals something very interesting which is the fact that Kawaki even though he has lost his karma now but still he is subconsciously asking for this power because his body is essentially a vessel of the Otsutsuki clan members that is an absolute fact the karma going is not going to change anything because the decompression of the Otsutsuki clan member has happened in his body and for the most part his body has become like an Otsutsuki member now he was a Otsutsuki vessel and he will remain an Otsutsuki vessel the only thing which is remaining are the doors now the karma mark essentially acted like a door which could act as an entry and exit point for this particular power so amado reveals here that if kawaki wants because basically he knows that kawaki wants it he subconsciously wants it which was evident in the last chapter as well when he subconsciously raised up his arm in an effort to absorb bodo's rasengan so amado reveals here that he has the ability to actually produce an artificial karma mark if kawaki actually wants Now this is a huge thing this is absolutely huge and once again this is giving more credence and more merit to my theory which I've had in the past where I talked about how Amado might actually be an alien not an Otsutsuki clan member but rather a totally separate alien species whose home planet was destroyed by the Otsutsuki clan members who has come to earth seeking for vengeance seeking for revenge and he's kind of utilizing Konoha and all the other shinobi in this particular pursuit I'm going to explain this in depth in a separate video so be sure to stay tuned for that I'm going to talk about how all of these things tie up into the 10 tails and the new chakra fruit as well And also I'm not going to go chronologically in this chapter because next we get to see the interaction between Code and Ada but before that let me just complete the parts about Amado all together I do not want to come back to Amado once again so here towards the end of this chapter actually Sumire has a conversation with Amado and Sumire is getting more and more suspicious over the activities of Amado Amado accuses her of being a spy for Shikamaru and he says that if she had not opened her mouth then maybe she would have been able to easily spy upon him but now he's calling her an idiot for asking something like this but sumire retorts back and says that she's doing all of these things out of her free own will and basically she's getting suspicious about the behavior of amado once again because amado is acting very sus and he's giving us all these plot points about how kawaki will eventually regain his karma in the time skip so yeah things are looking very interesting so far and that is the entire conversation about amado the entire gist of all of these things in this chapter is that amado is acting very suspiciously and not just us now even the in universe characters are also getting wary about him 
Therefore, I would also like to say that Naruto might have actually made a mistake of not consulting Orochimaru before giving Boruto these Byakugan suppressant drugs. On that note, on the topic of Orochimaru, we still do not get to see Kashin Koji or Orochimaru for that matter. I still would like to believe that Sasuke has actually gone to seek out to Orochimaru for maybe some sort of a power up or some discussion about the entire current situation. Maybe we'll get to see that in the future of the series because I feel like the involvement of Orochimaru is going to be very, very, very crucial here moving forward into the series. Also, before we get to the Ada part, Kawaki was currently roaming inside Konoha when he has a daytime outburst. He is very much tense about the current predicament and current situation when none other than Shikadai actually spots him and calms him down. This entire interaction is really amazing in my opinion because Shikadai has finally accepted him and he says that if Nana Daima has accepted you, then obviously everyone is fine with it, everyone has accepted you as well. You should not be worried about all these trivial matters. You should be a proud member of Konoha now because the 7th Hokage has accepted you now. So this entire conversation was really genuinely awesome in my opinion and it also kind of gives us an insight into the character growth of Kawaki and it all leads us back to that one singular question, what really happened? What happened and why exactly did Kawaki change in the time skip? What really happened there? In my personal opinion, this is kind of going to be a situation similar to Anakin Skywalker where the chosen one goes down the wrong path in order to save someone special. Once again, I'm going to talk about all of these things in a separate video, so stay tuned for that as well. Now finally, we head back to Boro's religious hideout because Ada and Code are talking about different things here and Code essentially reveals his hit list here and he says that yes, Kawaki is not on this list because he respects the decision of Ada and how she wants him to become his prince but the one person who is currently at the top of his hit list is definitely Hokage Naruto, the person who inevitably killed the god whom he revered so much. So yeah, this kind of sets up the future battle about Code versus Naruto. Ada also kind of reveals that she's not really very proficient with ninjutsu or anything like that. The only thing that she can actually use is basic level of taijutsu, but it's fine in my opinion, there was no need essentially to specify all of these things because the Sandrigan or clairvoyance is already quite hacks and there basically is no need for her to become such a proficient fighter in any way or form. And to this, she also tells Code that she's ready to become the eyes and ears for Code as long as he is able to fulfill the rule of night for her. Once again, this particular situation really reminded me of the dialogue of ReZero. I guess this is kind of a throwaway reference to that. And Code also says here that it's fine, I will obviously be there for you, but the situation is not as simple as it seems to be because all the five great nations are currently on a manhunt for Code. So what if he's busy in some particular fight and he's not able to save Ada? To this, Ada reveals that he is one knight, but she also has another knight. And finally, that leads us to the reveal of a new character, which is none other than Daemon, the biological brother of Ada, who has a lot of different hacks abilities. Not gonna lie, I'm not really a fan of his character design. He looks like a male version of Himawari. And if you all have seen manga Himawari, you know that the character design is just ugly. And that is the very same thing here as well. I know that maybe in the next couple of chapters, in the upcoming chapters, my perception for him might improve because this is the exact same thing which happened for Ada as well. When she was initially introduced in a pod, I really didn't like her design so much. She really reminded me of Hinata for some reason. But in the next chapter when she was actually fully revealed outside of her pod, her character design got a little updated and then she really looks nice. So that might be the case for Daemon as well. I'm not really sure but at least as of this chapter, I'm not really a huge fan of this particular design. Moreover, he has a lot of hacks abilities which basically amount to something like the mirror world where he can basically detect the hatred or malice inside of an opponent and before that opponent is even able to, you know, attack or move his attack, Daemon is able to reciprocate that attack and he's able to use that even before the enemy actually attacks him. So this is kind of like malice sensing and in a way this entire situation of Ada and Daemon really reminds me of Koga Ninja Scrolls as well the entire two halves of love and hate because Ada's powers represent love in a way and Daemon's powers represent hate in a way so they two are making one singular entity, one singular half and this also kind of reminds me of Daki and Gyudaro from Demon Slayer as well. I know that these are just passive references but at least the Koga Ninja Scroll reference is very heavy here. Moreover, I need to address one particular thing which I thought was very funny here. 
This chapter was supposed to be very serious because Damon is able to literally decapitate the head of some of the guards, some of the soldiers which came running into the room. It was supposed to be gruesome, but I just didn't find that gruesome enough. It's just kind of felt lame to me. And this entire plot about why exactly are these soldiers trying to attack them? Because if they're really a part of Boros religious cult, then they should obviously know about code. And I know that they are under the strict orders of Boro that no one is supposed to meet them or everyone should be disposed away but it just kind of feels redundant in a way and it really feels like a weak plot overall. So yeah, that is basically the reveal of Daemon, the brother of Ada. So my question is, what's next? In the next chapter, are we going to see the introduction of Linux or maybe JavaScript or maybe something like that if copyright is not really an issue so far? So overall, this chapter focuses on the following things, the reveal of the new villain or the second knight of Ada in the form of Daemon. And it's very evident that he's probably going to face off against Mitsuki. Realistically, he should be facing off against Naruto because Naruto during the Jinchuriki training had to face off against his own malice. And currently he does not even have Kurama. So he really shouldn't have any killing instinct as such. But I feel like this is a much more suitable matchup for Mitsuki and his sage mode. So that is the number one thing. The next thing, the more important thing in a way, is the entire subplot of Amado being dubious. He is definitely having some ulterior motives. And once again, I'm going to talk about them in a separate video. And the third thing is the artificial karma mark, the second karma mark for Kaoki and his eventual downfall in the future of the Boruto series. So these are the main issues which were raised in Boto Manga Chapter 59. And let me tell you all right now, after seeing the current events of the manga chapter, I don't really think that the time skip is actually around the corner. Initially, everyone was saying that Chapter 60 is going to be the time skip. I had always disagreed with that one. My initial prediction was around Chapter 63 to Chapter 65. But currently seeing this chapter, I don't really honestly feel like the time skip is coming around in maybe the next 10 chapters as well. Because there's a lot of different things which need to be established before jumping into the time. Because we have not seen Boto's training, we have not seen Sasuke interacting with Orochimaru, we have not seen Kash and Koji, we have not seen Kodo or Ada actually attacking or anything like that. So there needs to be a lot of different setups, especially for Amado as well, in order to move forward the time skip. So this is all we have currently for Boto Manga Chapter 59. Personally for me, this was a 3 out of a 5 or maybe a 3.5 out of 5 chapter. It was not really the best thing which I've seen so far and this is not certainly the worst thing I've seen so far. So it's just fine, it's just hanging in the middle. And I obviously have a lot of issues with the way in which the Boto manga is currently portraying its characters. There's not really a lot of world building as a way and it's genuinely feeling hollow. I know that the anime is adding all of these things but it's a discredit to the manga overall. So that's it for my review for Boto Manga Chapter 59. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. So that's it for today guys. Thank you so much for joining. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel for more. Also, please join the channel membership for some very cool perks and features. And also join our Discord server as well. We have a lot of discussions in relation to anime, manga and more. With that being said guys, this is Wonder YC and I'll see you soon on the next one.